Well, let's say it's been a long weekend. It's been, this is day five, Monday. Day five of isolation. We're all at home here. And let me just say our tempers are getting a little bit frayed. It's been raining for three days and the boys have been inside. We've managed to go out in the rain and go for walks. But, oh, do we feel a little bit stuck. Anyway, I thought I would do another tutorial Last year at the Pet and Ice Cake Show in Auckland, I did a vintage cupcakes class, and the ladies there were lovely. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to complete all the items on our cupcakes, and one of those things was the vintage cameo. So I'm going to do a little short tutorial today and show you how I fill my silicone moulds and how I get them out and hopefully that might help you. I mean, it's fairly simplistic. You might know how to do this already. This is um, for the benefit of my lovely ladies that came to the class, and you might find it interesting as well. Let's face it, what else do we have to do? All right, let's start. Oh, before I start, the little bows. The last little tutorial I did, we made some double bows. So here are the ones, they're all dried now. So what you would do is just pull out those tissues Make sure you get all the tissues out. I have been guilty of leaving one or two of these in before. And that's your, that's your bow, ready to go on cupcakes. All right. Cameo moulds. I have a few. This um, blue one is my favourite one. It's um, kind of elegant and old English. It's just a um, cameo mould without any framing around it but this is my favourite one. I would put one of these inside a frame like this, and this is what I've done on this cupcake here. Put the frame around it. I have other cameo moulds. This one here is a complete mould with the cameo and the frame all in one piece. They've also made it without the frame around it. And here's another one, same family, with just the head. So that's quite useful too, but I must say I use this one more than all the others, and this is the one that I'll be doing today. So we have our mould. I have some fondant. I'm going to do the mould in white, the cameo part in white, and the frame in black. So we'll just soften this up. To this I'm going to add a little bit of tylose powder. This will make it nice and firm. How much? About that much. Half a teaspoon. This will make it nice and firm um, once it comes out of the mould. We don't really want it to collapse or um, lose its shape. And it will make it set a lot quicker as well. So just kneading the Tylos powder into the fondant. Another nice bit. You don't want any dry, hard bits in your fondant. So kneading that all in. Getting our cameo mould. Tap, tap. Bit of cornstarch. Maybe we'll do a couple. Just dust up the cavities. We'll do two. Bang out the excess. Taking a bit at a time, push it in as hard as you can. If you think you've got too much, pinch out a bit. Now I could add the fondant with the Tylose powder added already for maybe a few days, but it wouldn't push into those crevices. It, it hardens up a bit once you put Tylose powder in it. So you would want it nice and fresh, Tylose powder just added, and then you can push it into all the crevices in that mould. If it's any firmer than this, which it would be if you'd added it a wee while ago, it wouldn't get the detail in it. Push down really firmly. And now, this will go into the freezer for 10 minutes. 
All right, I thought while that's in the freezer for 10 minutes, I'll fill up the frame one. So around this white cameo, we've got a nice black frame. Now the black frame is a little bit different. We do not add cornstarch to the frame because we don't want the white stuck onto the black. We want that black to be pure black going around our cameo. So I now have black. This is um, Bakel's Pet and Ice. And I'm going to try and keep it's very handy having a sink there. I'm going to try and keep any white off this. So I keep it away from that big pile of cornstarch I've got there, which is not that good. I'll shift away a bit. Add some tylose powder to this as well. Just a pinch or two. Knead it all the way through. You can see the white in that. We just have to knead it till that white disappears. And I get it all over my hand, so that's all right. What we're going to do, place the mould over the cornstarch, because we're just going to feed it into the mould. And this mould here has kind of got a little lip, so I just have to push it quite firmly into the frame mould, all the way round. When it has a little lip like that, it's got a bit of an overhang, it does make it a little bit harder to get out, but that's okay because we're going to put it in the freezer. The freezer will firm it up and make it easier for us to flip it out. Pushing, pushing, pushing. Now I hope you've had a try at the Vintage Bow video I did on Friday. So they're kind of cute. If you have Write to me and tell me how you went. Show, send me a picture. I'd love to be able to see it. Need a bit more in there. Pushing, pushing, pushing. And now this will go in the freezer as well for 10 minutes. And then I'll come back and I'll push them out and show you how they look. All right, our 10 minutes is up. And they've been in the freezer, they've firmed up quite nicely. Now we've just got them out and you have to kind of work quick because they start to it's like defrost, warm up, and then you'll never be able to get them out of the mould. They'd have to go back in the freezer again. So we're going to pop these ones out. And they pop out quite nicely. So I'm just pulling back the mould and letting them drop out. And they've dropped out quite beautifully and the Impression on there is really clear. I'm really happy with that. The paste has been pushed in really well into the mould, really firmly. There's no cracks, um, there's no indentations. That's looking really good. So she looks great. Now the frame, that can be a little bit more tricky to get out. We have to really pull back hard on this mould. We don't want the frame to break. And it's quite firm from the freezer. We're pulling back that lip. It's not going to want to come out. I'm going to nudge it gently with my finger as we move around. And voila! Push it down, flatten it up. That looks good. I'm going to place that in there just to make sure it's the right shape. Yep, that looks good. Now I can let that dry like that. I'm not going to pick it up and show you because that will ruin it. But that's ready to firm up. You need to keep it on a flat surface while it's firming up. So I would put that on a flat, maybe baking tray overnight, and in the morning that would be nice and firm. The tylose powder in it will make it go quite hard. If you'd just done it with fondant, um, it would take three or four days to get nice and firm. So once that is hard, I would turn it over, put a dollop of royal icing on the back, and then secure it to a cupcake. I just have to tell you, coming up in the next few days, I'll be filming a rose tutorial. I've put out on Facebook asking for ideas on what rose
that you would like to see made. And I've got lots of roses coming through, lots of David Austins, that seems to be a popular one. And a couple of ladies requested a blue moon, so I thought I'm kind of intrigued by that one. So I've coloured up my paste already, so blue moon is going to be the rose. I've coloured up my paste already, got a really nice, you see kind of purpley, maybe they should call it purple moon, but it's purpley. A lighter and a darker colour and so I'm ready to go to make this rose. I'm actually rather nervous about it, but um, it'll be the first time I make it and I'm going to film it. So please don't be hard on me if it doesn't quite turn out. I'm, I'm hoping it will. You can be the judge of that. Anyway, looking forward to that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in a few days.